I finished working on the little circuit inside the CRT housing. And now I'm going to leave that plastic housing off of this. So I can hook it back up to the set and power it up and check the voltages in here, including the high voltage. It should be between 14 and a half and 15 and a half thousand volts. Now back to the main chassis. While I had the IF board out, I replaced a bunch of out of spec resistors. And now before I put it back together, I want to replace that bad power switch. Luckily I've got a new old stock replacement. So I need to remove this. Do that by taking these two screws out and you slide this little clip over. Then you can get this control out of the detach some of the connections back there, and then you carefully pry up the tabs, and you can take this control apart and replace the switch. Here's a closer look at that control. So I just want to replace this part. I'll leave the rest all alone. I won't have to take these wires off. I can work with it in place. Just on side of these two wires, these are for the uh, AC switch, and then carefully pry back each of these three metal tabs just enough to get this out. I do not want to break those off. That would really ruin my day. I was able to get the switch off without breaking off those tabs. Hopefully I can bend them back with sufficient holding power to keep the new switch on. Oh, that's right. I remember this from the last time I did this. I forget that the new switches actually contain this part, this housing. So that actually doesn't help you out any though. <laughs> I remember going through all this before because in order to make use of these tabs you have to take these out and there's no way to get those out unless you take the top part off. So I think what I ended up doing before was I took this part off and reused the old one and cinched it on around the bottom. I suppose you could cut this and then put this on and bend these tabs in, but uh, that doesn't seem worth it. It seems a little more destructive than one needs to be. Now, as for the switch remains, I was surprised it actually looks okay, other than being really gunked up. Makes me wonder if someone had sprayed contact cleaner in here and flooded it and it got down inside the switch and gummed everything up. But the actual switch mechanism, so there's two metal triangles down in there, which I think are silver. They look clean, they look okay. They're not worn out, they're not all corroded. And this is what makes contact with them, which also looks to be in pretty good shape. Except maybe on the ends here, these arms used to be longer and they've worn off. Otherwise, all I can think of is that because of the, the gooey goop inside here, it wasn't uh, rotating properly, making good contact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the new switch, regardless. But I'm going to flush all this out and hang on to this in case I need one in the future. Because I think this may very well be salvageable. It just uh, needs a good cleaning. I hit it with some electrical parts degreaser and cleaned it right up. Nice and shiny. But now I can see that the contacts are a little bit fried. I think that is silver plated brass down in there and it's pitted probably from arcing. But you now I, I suspect this will have a pretty good chance of working if I put it back together. It's just watching uh, Shango 66 working on an RCA TV and he had some latex gloves on. You know, Thinking maybe I should give that a shot one of these days with all these ooey gooey capacitors and sticky wires leaving crap on my fingers that I have to use solvents to clean off later. It's probably not the best thing. Here's the new switch installed. Got the control cleaned and lubed up. It turns out that not only does this degreaser do a good job cleaning the gunk out of the inside of the switch housing, but uh, oh, some overspray on the wires and it does a really nice job removing the sticky goo from them too. So this whole thing is looking like new now.
I just finished putting everything back together, reinstalled the tuner, put the tubes back in, got the new power switch in there, got it hooked up to the pitcher tube, and all ready to fire up. So, let's see how it works now. So, the current mode. Yeah, picture. Oh, still just about one and a quarter amps. Yeah, well, I'm looking more into that later. You know, local distance, which makes quite a bit of a difference. So I must have this in local mode now. If I go into distance. Uh, it's interesting too. The focus actually looks pretty good now. When I'm in the local mode, meaning there's less gain. But when I go into distance, meaning there's more gain. Volume gets better, but... The picture looks... A bit harsher, less focus. Turn the contrast down. So, that's been part of the issue. So, I'm fitting in a really strong signal. So, keep this in the uh, local position. Seems like the sound and video are a bit kind of out of whack now. Although that can't really be true because this is an inner carrier side of both audio and video go to the whole same IF stages, so it can't be out of whack. We're just hearing a faint buzz in the audio, that's why I say that. Okay, that that helps now. I'm curious when I tried adjusting this when I first got this uh, running that didn't have much effect. The instructions did adjust this for minimum buzz and best volume, so obviously now we got horrible, garble buzz. And that's where it was before I did anything. If I got a little bit more, clockwise. I feel like it's louder. Well, that's much better. Cool. Now we can see the picture without that cover on there. It's definitely brighter and it doesn't have that kind of weird greenish tint to it. But not much you can do about that. <laughs> uh, one, that covers there for uh, implosion safety protection, and two, well, you know, <laughs> it provides safety. You gotta can't leave all the stuff exposed. But now that I have it open, there's a few other interesting things I can check. One is I can try flipping this jumper here to the other position to see if the focus gets any better. And two, I can check the voltages around here, like the high voltage. So I've got to be careful not to bump into There's no insulating suction cup over it. It's just all exposed right there. Should be between 14 and 15 and a half thousand volts, according to this. So I'll uh, dig out my Fluke high voltage adapter and check that. But before I do, I'll try that focus jumper. I'm going to power down the set before I try that though. Oh no. Let's see how the power switch is working. <laughs> Alright, so here is the other position. So to recap what I changed in the last power up is I popped out this board, I replaced some of the resistors that were out of spec, put the original tuner that came with this back in, and I did recheck the tubes and found a few that weren't quite so good so I replace those. So now, is the focus any better? I think so. 
Royal Humane Society is waiving his option fees for all cats who have been waiting in the treehouse for more than one year. Enjoy professional snow sculptures during snow days, Chicago, February. I'd like to get some better programming on to, to judge it, though. One thing I key in on is the uh, station ID in the lower right hand corner. So, that looks pretty good. I'm going to power it off again and flip it back the other way and let's focus on the bounce down there. Or even just reading the text on the screen for that matter. Tell me my antenna's not good enough. Let's see if I can get that up again. And so that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty crisp lettering. All right, back to the other position. Oh, and of course the other difference now is that I uh, worked in that area. Also sprayed some deoxit into the uh, connector here. I'm gonna, after I do this power up, I'll show you what those pins look like. They're, they're pretty grungy. And I, I want to take this apart and do some work. And I can tell somebody did before too, because this tape wrapped around here was not there originally. And this cable is actually kind of cocked now. It's not as secure as it should be, so. All right, let it warm up a little. Kind of annoying. I'm gonna power it back up. The movie is not on there anymore, so there's no station ID in the corner. <laughs> well, I'll just let the set warm up for a while. In the meantime, uh, get that. Well, I mean, there's just this is commercial. It's blurry already. It's also not as bright. Because I, I can hardly read that message saying that my signal wasn't strong enough. Actually, it isn't too bad. But the text down here doesn't look so good. Neither does this. And once again, back to the other position. I definitely think this is a better position. It seems brighter. I don't know why the f I never this focus vision having an effect on brightness, but like looking at this lettering down here in the ad, I think this is the way to go. So I'm going to leave it in this position. I thought I sprayed some contact cleaner down on this volume control, but still seems a little scratchy. So I think part of the issue before was that I'm pretty sure all this time working with these sets I've had the local distance switch and distance position which seems to overdrive the game. I knew something wasn't right with these because it was capable of making a much better picture than what we've been looking at. Alright, let's check that high voltage. I clip ground, here comes the probe. Hmm? Well, 14 and a half, so between 14 and a half and 15 and a half, and it's about where I'm at, and I bet if I turn this brightness down, high voltage is going to go up. Yeah, a little bit. So it's a little bit low. And I'm running this set on 120 volts. 
I know the B plus in the current draw is lower than. Well, oh, actually, no, no, no never mind. <laughs> I forgot it was still in the current range. So actually, I'm running it. Actually, yeah, yeah, 119, 120. So, uh, hey, I think it's close enough. So, I don't know. So that seems to be working fine. I do have one last idea about this whole B plus current draw situation now. Should get to in a bit. As you have to be told, we got it. I want to talk to you. The only remaining issue I, I see is well, some static in the picture, but then again, I got this chassis open. I don't know that I've put all the screws in and trust all the leads properly, but otherwise. What do you want? It's playing great. I can get it very it bright too. In here. Very well. Not about like that. That's where you'd normally be watching this. Sit down, Mr. Mullet. Oh, that's what I think. Suit yourself. Mr. Mullet, I'd like to ask you one more time. You never opened this safe since your brother's tenure in this office. Never. One last thing I want to double check is the actual filament current draw in this chassis. I did it in the other one that I'm simultaneously working on, but not in this one. The other chassis still has the original Filco thermistor, which is 400 ohms cold and 11 ohms hot. I could not find a modern equivalent for that, for this one, because the one in this was, was uh, missing. So what I found was these, which are... 220 cold, and I think only uh, a few ohms hot. So I suspect this is going to have a higher initial surge current, but I'm not sure what the steady state current is going to be. So I got this dialed into about 117. I pulled out the uh, fusible resistor, so it's only going to be the draw of the filaments. So I've got my meter set on the 1.5 amp scale. Let's see. Okay, surge to about one and a quarter amp, which is a bit higher than the other set. And 0.6 amps would be two ticks above 0.5. So that part of it's okay. Double check the output voltage. Yeah, about 117. So I think the initial surge is higher, but it settles down. It is the, the shade under 0.6. And I'd noticed that just observing the sets visually when I turned them on, that the filaments on this chassis light up faster than on the other chassis. In other words, either one takes a lot longer to warm up. Which is annoying if you want to start watching TV, but it's better for the tubes to not have that initial surge current. Now that's a 117. I would rather just plug this right into my outlets and whoever you know ends up with this set after me may very well want to do that too. In which case it would probably be more like over here, 125 or so. Goes a little higher, maybe 126. Now let's see where we're at. Yeah, that's not so good. Now we're uh, not quite 0.65, maybe 0 0.64, 0 0.63. So higher than I'd like it to be. So what I think I'll try doing, a simple solution is, put two of these in series. Another possibility would be to throw another maybe 4.7 ohm resistor or so in series with this, which would decrease the steady state current, but it really wouldn't do anything for that initial surge current. But this will, because this, put two 20s in series, you get 440 cold startup, which is pretty close to the original specs, and I expect the steady state current will be close 
to the correct value as well. And if your AC voltage at the outlet is say 120, this side we're running a little bit less current, that should be fine. Only thing I've noticed is if I turn my variac down so the tube current does decrease, um, well, I'll take longer for this up to warm up of course, but also the picture shrinks a little bit. But that's also because the B plus is being affected. But uh, it's not enough that you can't uh, easily adjust for it by tweaking the height control a little bit.